All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies class, I've been going through and creating a series of video presentations that are based on the Mozilla Developer Network Learn Web Development series. And we are in the middle of cross-browser testing and talking about accessibility. All right, and we finished up last time talking about the stuff with JavaScript. One of the main areas it says problematic for accessibility is complex apps that involve more complicated form controls like date pickers, if they're used especially incorrectly. Non-native complicated form controls are problematic because they involve a lot of nested divs. And we've talked about the fact before that the browser doesn't understand how to use these. It says if you're using some kind of a third-party framework, review the options available to see how accessible they are before diving in. Bootstrap looks to be fairly good for accessibility. For example, although making Bootstrap a little bit more accessible explores some of the issues. We talked about this before and the fact that nothing is one is going to make your site 100 percent accessible now one of the interesting things about bootstrap is bootstrap 5 was recently released and i have no idea you know in what they've added to bootstrap 5 if they've added anything to accept for accessibility i'm going to go here to the bootstrap 5 release notes all right bootstrap blog what's new about it well i know one thing is they've removed most of jquery and that's a that's a big thing but let's see if they mention in here well it says access but there's nothing it looks like on accessibility Okay, so I'm not sure if there's anything in there or not. All right. Do you need such complex functionality or will plain semantic HTML do instead? It says if you do need complexity, consider we've talked about this before. W-A-I-A-R-I-A. -A -A. And we, we went over all of it. We've talked about it before. We had a whole section on it before. To deal with regularly updating regions of content, as it says, you can use the ARIA live attribute, which identifies updating regions. And you can see some examples right there. All right. Now that we've covered accessibility considerations, including a few techniques, let's have a look at the tools you can make use of. There are a number of auditing tools available that you can feed your web pages into. They will look at them and return a list of accessibility issues present on the page. And three of them are mentioned here. Now, one thing again to really realize is when you're doing this, you, you know, we, we've talked about this before, always consider your audience. What do I mean by that? Well, let's assume, for example, let's say that you publish books. And let's say that many of the books you publish are in Braille. All right. Are people who buy those books are probably either going to be sight impaired or people who teach to the sight impaired. All right. So this that's one of those things where you might want to go and run your site through tools like this to point out hopefully any accessibility issues you may have. It says let's go to an example. All right, so it says here, go to the Wave homepage. Enter in the URL, so I just put it in there, hit enter. All right. Congratulations, no errors were detected. Manual testing is still necessary to, to show. All right, so it's given me a couple alerts, and the ARIA is set to zero. Not sure what that means, so let's take a look. The site should respond with a description of accessibility problems. Click on the icons displayed to see more information about each thing that's in there. I mean, again, that's just an example of what you can do, right? Let 
no heading structure, no page regions. All right. So again, we can click on there and they will give us, you know, messages about what's going on. And then again, the page has no headings, no page region. The language of the document was not identified, which probably means if we look in here, we've got, no, oh, we do have the language, so I'm not sure what it is. And even look at that. That's over 100 lines for a site that actually in many ways was poorly set up. So it will involve the user creating, writing more code. But ideally, in the end, it's going to provide a better user experience. All right. It says, uh, I don't know if that's decays. Axe tool goes a bit farther like the others. It checks pages and returns accessibility errors. Its most useful form is probably the browser extensions that it has. It says then these add an accessibility tab to the browser tools. And they're showing it right here. It says they use their bad table, the one we looked at before, and we got these results. All right. It's also installable using the Node Package Manager and can be integrated with task runners, which we don't even get into in here. All right, screen readers. It's definitely worth testing with a screen reader to get used to how severely visually impaired people use the web, and there's a lot of them available. Generally, as it says there, screen readers are separate apps that run on the host operating system and can, not only, can read not only web pages, but text and other apps as well. VoiceOver. As it says, it comes free with your Mac, iPhone, or iPad. And, you know, there again, if you're using Android or a Windows-based system, there are other things that you can get as well. It says there you should go through their tutorial at, we, at least once. It's a useful way to learn voiceover. So here it looks like the equivalent NVDA. As it says, it's Windows only. You can make a down, donation or download it for free. Once downloaded, you install it. To start it, you double click on the program. All right, it says there's a couple of options you can get going, and it looks like you can probably put in a URL of what you're looking for. There's a bunch of shortcuts for it. it says, now that you've gotten used to using a screen reader, we'd like you to use it to do some quick accessibility tests. I'm not going to run through that, but feel free to. Here's a checklist. This is, if nothing else, you should take a look at this. The stuff that's in here, virtually all of it, if not all of it, we've discussed in this and other lessons. All right. So as it says, hopefully this article has given a good grounding and mean accessibility problems. So we're five or six through in here. The intro, this intro, we've done all these. So now it's implementing feature detection. It's time for this, which will be our next video.